Hey, welcome to Cooking with G Butterfly. I know it's been a long time, but I have decided to cook something very light and healthy today. And I thought I'd bring you along and let you see what I'm cooking. It's just going to be veggies and a little thinly sliced pork. All righty, y'all know the first thing we always have to do is wash our hands. So for my meal today, these are the ingredients that I'm going to use. That better than uh, bouillon chicken. That's good. That minced garlic, you can't never go wrong with that. I have a few tomatoes I'm going to throw in there. Baby Bellas. I have zucchini and yellow squash. Red bell pepper. Onion. Green bell pepper. Use a little butter. And I also have some boneless, thinly sliced pork chops. And if you're not using that size on, you're missing out. And yes, I see where it's open. I opened it because I wanted to taste it. Got a little Creole seasoning, parsley flakes. Y'all know we're using that black pepper, salt, garlic powder, avocado oil. So yes, we're getting ready to make us. And I know you see my grapes over there. If you follow my page, you know I love grapes and eat them every day. All right, so I'm back. I'm getting ready to chop up my ingredients for my little healthy uh, one pan bake. And I already have my ingredients here on my chopping board. So I'm just going to chop and talk and talk and chop. And we'll see how it's going to turn out. Now, I actually took all of the little paper off the onion. I'm going to stick it on this package because I'm going to throw that package away. Because I'm going to use all of that size on in here. If you don't know anything about this, this is Goya brand. If you don't know nothing about that, order something from Amazon. S-A-Z-O-N. The brand is Goya. G-O-Y-A. Or you some from Amazon if you don't have it in your neighborhood. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. So, I always like to take that first layer of that onion off just because I just feel like it shouldn't, we shouldn't eat it. So, you know what? That's trash. You know what, after cutting that paper, <coughs> I see where I have a few little pieces of the onion paper. And I do not want that sticking to my onion. Alrighty. And since I'm going to have big pieces of veggie and meat, I'm just going to cut it like that. I love onion. I love onion. So my pan is already over there. And again, this is the first piece of the onion. I'm going to take it off. Cut that in three pieces. So not plenty of onion. I told you this is a quick, quick meal and it's healthy. I got my yellow squash. Again, I want them in nice size chunks. Bam, we finished. You see that? Over in the pan. I got my zucchini. I'm gonna do the same thing. Put three cuts and just make them big chunks. See? all those in the pan and when I tell you this is going to be healthy fast delicious yes I already rinsed off my green bell pepper I rinsed off my red bell pepper so, and I love cooking I haven't cooked in I haven't cooked online in a while I've just been extremely busy. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but when I cut my bell pepper, I don't want those little seeds in my bell pepper. And you see my sign, today's menu is, I got a sign back there that say, today's menu, eat it or go hungry. How many of you are like that with your family? If you're gonna eat what, they gonna eat what you cook or go hungry. And with the bell pepper, I want these to be in big pieces as well. See, pretty big size pieces. And I usually cut this bell pepper like around in a circle. So that I don't have to worry about pulling out that front piece. And that way that's, ooh, look at all the seeds on the inside. Look at this. So now you gotta go through and clean out your bell pepper. But tapping it. And then I don't like all this white. I'ma call it pith. I don't know what it's called in veggies, but I know in fruit. When it's that white part right under the skin, that's called pith. So that's what it's gonna be in this vegetable. If you know the answer, put it in the comments because I don't know what it's called. But 
know if you don't want all these seeds. See all of that? I don't know why. I just feel like it'll make my food bitter. And it may not, but I've always cut it out. Always. All right. We're going to keep it moving, y'all. This is something really fast because this is probably going to be ready in about 20 minutes. Once I put it, I got an oven set to 350. It's already hot. And again, look, see them the seeds everywhere. Cut this in four pieces. Now, my mom may eat some of this, but she don't like big pieces of bell pepper like that. I do. And see, if I don't eat, I'll eat it later. If she doesn't eat any, I'll take it to work for my lunch tomorrow. And again, I'll cut this in four pieces. Super simple. A person that has cooked a lot, this is a super simple dish that anybody can make. Even a teenager could make this dish. If you see my metal pan, I have everything here. Now, my preference would have been to put it in one of my aluminum pans, but we don't have any more. We have something that's really big, and there's no need to waste a really big one for this small meal. But this pan right here, this pan was my grandmother's. And she cooked with this pan a lot when I was growing up. And when she passed away, this was one of the things I wanted out of her kitchen. And I use it a lot. Well, I'm lying. I don't use it a lot because I use a lot of those aluminum pans so I can throw it away. But when I have to put something in the oven in this pan, I always think about the different things my grandmother cooked when I was growing up. So you'd be surprised how many things are nostalgic to you. So that's just a little bit more of the bell pepper. That was the green. I'm going to go ahead and just cut this up. Well, you know what? I'm not even going to waste it. Let me go down the side of this red. This is going to have a lot of seeds, just like. And this is a regular sweet bell pepper. And see, it has the same little seeds on the inside, but it's sweet. Growing up, I would like to eat bell pepper without... Uh, I would just eat it raw. I love, and you know what? How many of you like fire roasted red bell pepper? I do. I love fire roasted red bell pepper. So now I'll just cut this up in big chunks. I know some of you probably would have flipped it over to the inside because it is easier to cut that way. You want to throw that in the pan. So these reds are, you know, nice size pieces. But this is a very healthy meal. And we're gonna be using thinly sliced pork chop. And they say pork, oh, they say pork is the other white meat. Hey, now, if you heard me in that last little clip, you heard me say, ouch, I was cutting that bell pepper and I barely nicked my finger and cut. So I had to stop, go wash my hands, put a Band-Aid on, and because I have a Band-Aid, I'm going to go ahead and put this glove on, on this particular hand. And if you're wondering why I didn't have gloves on both my hands, because I'm at my own house. Y'all saw me wash my hands, and I'm always very clean when I cook. But since I cut my finger and I put this Band-Aid, um, I didn't want to run the risk of my band-aid sliding or something like that. So, we got one glove and one hand. But we're going to keep it moving, y'all. So, I was still cutting. Look, I even put my other knife in the sink and got this one. I love these knives. By Cuisinart, I don't know if you can see this, probably backwards. But I love Cuisinart. Super duper sharp. So, uh, I'm going to finish cutting my red bell pepper. Getting all the excess seeds out. Like I say, I love red bell pepper. I like to eat red, orange, yellow, green. I like them all raw. I don't necessarily have to have them cooked. I know some people, you know what? I need to watch what I'm doing because this is how I cut my finger the last time. Doing this, but I've been cooking for a long time. I think I'll be, I'll be okay. Like I said, 
that. When I do these little cooking videos, I try to go step by step just in case somebody really doesn't know how to cook. You know, sometimes you see this cooking video and you just say, bam, 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 and it's done. I try to take my time and let someone watch so that they can learn. Everybody don't know how to cook. Luckily, I learned how to cook with my mom and with my grandmother growing up. But everybody, just like everybody, just assume ladies know how to do hair. Not necessarily. So, all of my red bell peppers cut. Add that to the pan. And I have my baby bellas. I'm not going to run them under any water. But what I am going to do is just wipe them off a little bit with this towel. I'm just going to wipe them a little bit because I don't want to put them under water and then they get kind of waterlogged. And I don't want that to happen. So you can see I have all my veggies in one pan and I'm just wiping off my mushrooms. I'm going to leave them whole. I don't even want to cut them. But I'm just going to continue to wipe them off. Put them in. Again, this is a super simple meal if you need something really quick. And I assure you, it's definitely healthy. Baby was here. She would be in hog heaven because she loves mushrooms. Love, love, love mushrooms. And again, I don't want to put them in water because they're going to absorb the water and I don't want all that water in my pan because they will cook out. I just want you to see, yes, I am still wiping them off. And you know when you cook with mushrooms, they cook down to nothing. So you pretty much can put as much as you want. And these are baby bellas. If you like portobello mushrooms, you're going to like these. Mushroom, mushrooms are, um, for some people, are meat substitute. In my opinion, mushrooms don't have any flavor. They just take on the flavor of whatever you're cooking. I may save a few of these mushrooms to cook with me some eggs this weekend. I'm trying not to do this where you can see the real. See, this pan looks full, but it's going to cook down because these are just veggies. But it's going to have so much flavor. to the bottom of this container. So, I'm, gonna wipe it. I'm just going to save a few in here. I'll chop those up in my eggs for Saturday morning. All right, well, that's that. And I also said I had some tomatoes. I love these little baked tomatoes. I said, hey, why not? It's a baby pan. Let's throw them in there, too. Let me grab this little stuff. And here, I use this as a little container. All that's going to the trash. Can get a spoon out of here. Now, you can't go wrong seasoning up your food, even though it's big. It's, oh, you know what? And as you can see. These are thin, thin, thin sliced pork chops. They were in a container, but as you can see, I took them out. I rinsed them really good. If you're not washing off your meat, you're nasty. But I'll rinse this off really good already. I'm just going to cut this up in little thin slices. I'm just going to stack them. One on, look how thin they are. See how thin those pork chops are? Thin, thin, thin. So it's going to cook just as fast as this meat. I'm going to try to stack them up exactly, yeah, so stack them up like this and just cut them in bite-sized pieces. These knives are extremely sharp, so I'm cutting the meat kind of in the same size that I cut the veggies. I'm just going to drop them in there, and remember this is, this is pork chops, the other white meat. And you know that that already is going to render off some flavor. Go ahead and just clean this area just a little bit. Put this stuff in the sink. And bring this over here in front of me. 
me see if I can get my camera a little bit closer for you. A little bit closer. How is that? Now you can see all of my veggies. See how thin the little strips of pork is? So it's going to cook really fast. And that's what I wanted. Because the veggies are not going to take any time to cook. All the tomatoes are going to do is just cook, burst, and just add a little flavor. I'm trying to just pull a few of the pieces apart so they won't be stacked on top of each other. All right, now. Nice. Cannot go wrong with some Creole seasoning and be generous. Although, if you have sodium issues, you may want to find you some salt free. But remember, these are veggies that don't have a lot of flavor, so you're going to have to do something to enhance it. Now, remember, I told y'all about this size on. Oh, it's good. It's a little red powder. Let me put some in the glove so you can see what it looks like. Seems like a red oranges color. Look, I'm just gonna sprinkle that all over. This is just gonna add such a good flavor to these veggies. Okay. Garlic. Everybody doesn't like garlic. I love it. So that's why I'm gonna use a generous amount of it. Again, these veggies have no flavor, y'all. So you're going to have to make sure you put enough flavor for the veggies. And you want to make sure you have enough veggies. I'm sorry, enough flavor for the meat. So far, we've already put some Creole. I'm going to go ahead and put black pepper. I'm not going to put that much salt. Because I'm just going to put a little bit. We have to remember we use Creole season and we use the Saison, which has a little salt. So I'm just going to put a little, just a little. A few little parsley flakes on there. To be honest, now this is my opinion. Parsley don't even have any flavor. I just use it just because it's in the cabinet. You can never go wrong. Uh -oh. You can never go wrong. Granulated garlic. See that? That's goodness in the bottle. So I'm gonna put maybe one teaspoon. Man, how about two? I'm going to rinse this spoon off because I'm going to use the same spoon. This is some better than bouillon paste. Chicken flavor. Now, I, I, don't, I already know I got pork in here. I know, I know, I know. This, good flavor. So, I'm going to put a teaspoon of that. See? The bouillon paste, deliciousness. So I've added all my seasonings that I'm going to add. Little avocado oil. You use whatever kind of oil. Uh -oh. You use whatever oil you want. I'm just going to put a little avocado oil. I know y'all heard that top fall on the floor. That's why I'm not even getting ready to reach down and get it. I'll get it when I'm finished. Now, I was trying to get that bouillon paste off my spoon. I don't want to. Ooh, that look good. See that? Goodness. All right. See? Now, since I already have this hand with a glove, and I was about to mix it up anyway. Now, once I get everything mixed up, if the veggies look like they don't have enough flavor, I'm going to go back through with some more. But for now, I'm just going to mix everything. Now, why I had a mushroom just fall out of this pan? But that's all right. I should have got a bigger pan. But when this cooked down, believe me, it's going to be more than enough room. But right now, all I'm doing is just mixing the veggies up so that the oil can get on all the veggies. And the seasoning that I put can incorporate on everything. You see the veggies are kind of turning like that reddish orange color. That's from that size on. And I'm, I promise you, if you get that, that's going to be a lot of flavor. I can already see my veggies covered. I can see my meat. Now, remember I put these onions in here? You may want to have to break some of these onions up. And it's simple, you know. Super simple. I'm just using my hand to separate some of them. Let's see. 
probably have another piece of onion down there that I can break up if it hasn't already broken up since I've been moving everything. See, here's a piece. Break that onion up. Again, when I do these little cooking videos, I like to go step by step because everybody don't know how to cook. And sometimes when you're watching videos and they're not telling you every single step, but some people need very detailed instructions, step by step by step by step by step. And that's okay. That's okay. But see, look at that meat. You see how that meat got all that flavor on it? You know that's getting ready to be good. But again, always mix everything up so your seasoning and your oil can get incorporated off of everything. On everything, I'm sorry. It looks like everything is covered with my size on because I can tell the orange is color. See, look. See that zucchini? See how it's turning? That color? Because that season is already on there. Even I can even tell the difference in my mushroom caps. You probably can't see it, but the color, I can definitely tell the difference. You, you can never have too much seasoning. Or should I say too much flavor? You can never go wrong with flavor on your food. And you know, I put that... Uh, garlic and I put that bouillon base that's going to add even more flavor again this is something really quick this look like it might feed about four people because it's going to cook down very inexpensive meal I think the most expensive thing was um, the mushrooms they were like four dollars for the container but the bell pepper a dollar and something these 68 cents a piece this large pack of all of these sliced up uh, zucchini and yellow squash I think it was maybe four bucks and believe it or not that pack of pork chops was only two dollars and some change so this is a very inexpensive meal but it's gonna be filling but you're not gonna feel full so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cover it with some tin foil I'm gonna put it in the oven I'm gonna it's on 350 I'll leave it in there for about maybe 30 minutes look here's another piece of onion I need to take apart I'll leave it in there for about 30 minutes and check it and then if it's done, it'll depend on the tenderness of the veggies. That's what's really going to be the determining factor. That's why I say maybe about 30 minutes. I'm going to put the tin fall on, but I'm not going to cover all four ends really tight. I'm going to leave one end up so that the steam can come out because I don't want the steam to build up in the pan and cause condensation and I have liquids at the bottom of the pan. I really don't want that. I really just want um, the veggies to just steam a little bit. All right, so everything is well incorporated. The oil is on everything, the season is on everything. Now it's time to put this bad boy in the oven and I'll let you see the final results. This G butterfly and I'll see y'all back when it's ready. Okay, so we're back with cooking with G butterfly and now I'm gonna take my, my veggie and pork steak. Not pork steak, did I say that? That was pork chops. Take my veggie and pork steak mix out of the oven, check it to make sure the veggies are tender, and I'm actually going to taste a little piece of, I guess, the yellow squash to see if I need to add any additional flavor. Okay, so now I'm going to take it out of the oven, and again, my oven was on 350 degrees. I left this side. This side was open the entire time because I wanted the steam to come out. I didn't want the veggies to steam and cause a lot of condensation on the inside. And oh my God, look at those veggies. Oh my God, that looks so good. Now what I'm going to do, I do see a little liquid at the bottom. And when I put this back in the oven, I just want to use these tongs just to kind of turn the veggies over. When I put this back in the oven, I'm not going to put a top on. Oh my God, this looks so good. My veggies look pretty tender. Again, you know you don't have to let veggies cook a long time. I'm just going to turn them over just a little bit. I don't want to move them too much because I don't want them to break up, especially my big pieces of zucchini and yellow squash. I can tell my mushrooms and my tomatoes are tender. As you can see, I said earlier how the tomatoes were just pretty much burst. And that's what happened here, if you can see that piece. Let me see. Maybe I can pull. Let me take the stone off. I can get you. Sorry about that. That way you can see right in the pan. You see the zucchini. You see the tomatoes. You can see how the tomatoes kind of burst open. And what happens is that tomato, all of that flavor 
it's gonna go down there. And if you can see, I have a little liquid at the bottom of the pan. You see the little bit of liquid? I really don't want that. So I'm gonna put this back in the oven. The My onions are pretty getting pretty translucent. My bell peppers are soft, but they still have a little bend to them. I mean, it's a little, still a little stiff, but I don't want them wilty. I want them to still have to be a little firm. I love fresh veggies. Love, love, love fresh veggies. So I'm going to stick this back in the oven, but I am going to put me a little piece of pork chop and a little piece of squash in a bowl. I can tell this squash is done. Can you see that? This squash is done. I'm going to take a little piece of this just to taste it because I need to make sure and try to determine if I need any more seasoning before I put it back in the pan uncovered. So I put me a piece of squash and I put me a small piece of the pork chop in here. I want to taste it just to see if I need any additional flavor. So let's see. Mm, mm, mm. The seasoning is on this is good. Actually, I'm going to put just a little salt, just a little. That was the squash. Let me check my pork chop. Mm. This is so good. It's fast. It's been about 35 minutes. I'm going to put it back in the oven for about maybe 15 more minutes uncovered. But I'm going to put a little salt. This is good. If you're looking for something really quick to cook and a lot of veggies, you're not getting a lot of fat. This pan, if it was on one person, you probably could eat on this two days. Mm-hmm. That's my grandbaby says. My grandbaby says, dang, I'm summed up. I'm just going to put a little salt. out everything and I'm going to put it back in the oven like I say for about 10 maybe 15 minutes uncovered and look I'm gonna eat a piece of this red bell pepper but not I'm not gonna eat it like this I'm gonna put it in my bowl put my trusty little I know y'all hear my mama coughing in the background huh I'm gonna put this about 10 15 more minutes uncovered and we're going to see the final results in a second. Hey, I'm back. And I've taken my veggie pan out of the oven. And I've actually put it on a plate so you can see all of the veggies. And I'm looking at the pan. I'm looking at my plate. I probably can eat off what's in that pan three or four more times. And this plate is actually pretty full. So I'm going to try to tip my phone so that you can see what I have in here. You see I have the mushrooms. The tomatoes yellow and green squash, pieces of the thinly cut pork, onion, bell pepper. I think I came out with a very healthy meal and it tastes delicious. And this was just another day of cooking with G Butterfly. Hope you can try this. I tried to go step by step. It's not hard. The seasonings, again, you put any seasonings you want. I put what I like, but everyone's taste buds are a little different. So I hope you enjoyed this segment of Cooking with G Butterfly, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.